What's up YouTube? Welcome back. 357 SIG ammo test series continued. Today we are on number 10. We have an extreme penetrator. This one here is continuing with Underwood. That's what we've done for number 6, 7, 8, 9, and now 10. So this is, like I said, the extreme penetrator. This is a 115 grain version going at an advertised velocity of 1450. And so far in this testing, Underwood has not disappointed on their velocity. So I'm pretty sure this will do the same, but we're going to confirm that with our rusty, dusty, but still kind of trusty chronograph. We're going to be shooting those projectiles through the chronograph with the same two guns we've been using for all of these tests in the series. We have a Smith & Wesson M&P 357 SIG with a four and a quarter inch barrel. That's a 1.0. They don't make a 2.0 in that caliber. And then we have a SIG Nightmare, 357 SIG, of course, and that's a 5-inch 1911. We will try to nail these B8 targets dead center from 20 feet away. And while we're doing that, as long as we have enough sunlight left, we'll get an average of velocity, we'll get the foot-pound number, and we'll just get some general idea of practical offhand accuracy. Now, we have some pretty beat-up gel blocks, but we still have some life in them, I think. If I have the right shot placement, we have three 20-inch, so a total of 60 inches of 10% clear ballistics gel blocks. These extreme penetrators and extreme defenders, they have a tendency to get pretty pokey, so a lot of times they will make it out of that first 20 inches. Keep in mind, I said 20-inch gel blocks. When you're comparing these to maybe some other people's tests, a lot of people use 16-inch gel blocks. I'm not knocking a 16-inch gel block, but just if you think about how far they penetrated in some of those blocks, keep in mind these are a little bit longer than average. Testing explained, let's get to shooting. All right, 15 feet off the chronograph, 20 feet off that B8 target on the left. Let's let some 115 grain chunks of copper fly. That's pretty flashy at this time of day. 1463. And 1444. I shot a little low on that one. Or the ammo shot a little bit low. That's actually, I don't know, both of those landed pretty close to each other. 1435. And we had 1466. And 1458. Definitely pretty flashy right now. Let's go take a look. So we achieved the velocity that the box said, even out of a four and a quarter inch barrel. We did stack two right on top of each other. That's a pretty good group. I know I pulled that one down a little bit. I always like to see them touching the X-ring, but maybe it's not the best lighting right now. Still a great group and definitely within that circle that I consider good enough for defense at that distance. Let's move on to the 1911, see if we tighten things up a little bit, see what happens with the velocity. All right, still 15 feet off the chronograph and 20 feet off that target. Can't see where it is, but we're at 1506. 1510, nice and bright out of the muzzle. It's actually pretty hard for me at this time of day to orient on that target. I'm just barely riding the light, but 1465. And 1485. 1480. That was pretty close. Let's take a look. Not a bad group. Probably not my best group that I could do. Like I said, the light's getting a little low. Sorry about that, but we definitely showed that it can be what you need for defensive purposes. Both of these groups are pretty good. And out of both of these guns, it feels pretty darn good. Neither one of these are more than somebody could handle. If you can handle 9mm, you can handle 357 SIG. All right, 15 feet off that chronograph and target. I got to try to aim a little bit higher since I seem to be shooting a little bit low. Hopefully I kept that in the block. We have 1507.
Okay, 1507 is the velocity. There's where we hit that top shot right there. And you're not gonna believe this. Well, you might. This went through. This is why I like to use the 20 inch gel blocks. So, I don't even need to get the sec or get the tape out at the moment. But of course I will to prove it. So there you go, there's that top track. You gotta follow that along. And wow, that's a nice disruptive wound channel. That thing goes all the way down, keeps pretty consistent. You almost lose track of it there for a second. And that's at the 20 inch mark. Then you pick it back up here again, right there. And it continues. So it exited the first block, got into the second one, traveled another 20 inches and landed boom right there in between the two so you can see it says 41 almost but it says 40 and three quarter that's because these gel blocks when they sit flat for a while they might expand just a little bit but the bullet is right there it looks like two different bullets just because the way it's distorted but i promise promise you that's where it lays let's look from the top all right so that's the track we're following right there at the top and just follow it down and keep following it down i'll keep trying to keep the shadow out left one block, picked up again, and continued down. It kind of lost track of that wound channel for a second. Then you get towards the end of the block and boom. See what I say about it's distorted? It's just in between the two different blocks. So as you move it around, it's gonna look like two projectiles, but it is the one. So it's creeping out of the 40 inches of block. That's incredible. And it really did make a nice disturbance all the way down, nice enough. And when it's laying down there, it's laying actually face forward. So let's get her dug out. Actually, let's shoot the 1911 first. I'm forgetting my order of operations here. All right, now this might be interesting because if we increase velocity with this barrel length, it's not gonna distort the bullet at all, but might drive it a little bit farther or the flutes might snow plow it and slow it down a little bit. So let's see what we can do. Hopefully my shot placement is correct. <laughs> Extra flashy right next to the other one, 1459. Let's take a look. Fourteen fifty nine, and we put it right next to the other one. All right, so stick with me on this one. This one's going to be tricky. It'll look better on the overhead shot, but for now, keep an eye on that wound track. It is separate from the one that's behind it, which is the other penetrator. So as it moves down, you're going to follow that streak right there. Keep going with it. It does definitely go straight through one block. And here's where it's going to start to try to cross the paths with the other one. Right about there, they cross paths. And then it starts to take a dive upward and it lands right there. So it did shorten up a little bit. If you pull back here and we look at the tape, we're at, it's sitting right at 39 inches, maybe a little bit farther, 39 and a half might be the nose. It is sitting facing forward, just like the other one. Let's take a look from the top. Like I said, that's a better view. All right, there you go. The one closest to the bottom of your screen, that one is the one we're following. And as you can see, it makes its way down right next to the other one and then they kind of take it, or that one kind of takes a turn and it crosses, it crosses paths right over. You kind of lose track of it for a second, but then you pick it up laying right there. Let's get them dug out. So there you go. We got them dug out, but you're not going to see anything different be with either one of these because they just don't deform until they hit something really hard. It, maybe the rifling might look a little bit different from gun to gun, but for the most part, nope. There you go. Solid copper, deep penetrating, tissue disrupting, mean mamma jammas. Definitely accurate enough for defensive use, and I'm telling you, I can shoot a little bit better if the lighting was better, but that shows the picture pretty good. Shootability is there, and one of the awesome bonuses of the solid copper projectiles is they are pretty much barrier blind. When it comes to auto glass, drywall, thin walls of any type, bone, these types of things, it can get through this stuff. So keep that in mind when you're weighing all the different pros and cons of all the different types of ammo. Like I said, I tend to keep a magazine or two around for all sorts of cartridges because I just really like it. For hunting especially, I'm starting to really want to just use solid copper all the time because I'm sick of eating little tiny flecks of lead when they go astray. 
Well, maybe not eating them. I usually find them, but it's still not fun. Let us know what you think about this ammo that we tested today or any of the ammo that we tested in this series. I think it's all pretty good, actually. I think it's all really doing 357 SIG justice. If you guys like 9mm, you'll love 357 SIG. If you already shoot 357 SIG, you know what I'm talking about. If you love 10mm, you should probably like 357 SIG. It's in the same ballpark just about. It's actually a little bit easier to shoot sometimes. It's a little bit funny to reload every now and then, and sourcing certain things for it and definitely sourcing factory ammo can be a problem but if enough of us get back to buying it and using it maybe they'll start making more guns and they'll start bringing it back again supposedly there's one newer gun that they're supposed to chamber in it in a 2311 but i haven't heard anything more about that since that crap show or whatever you call it so Hopefully we get a little bit more 357 SIG love, just like a little bit more 40 caliber love. 10 millimeter love came back, but we got to fix up the rest of them, guys. So hope you liked this video. If you did, maybe give it a thumbs up and share it with someone else who might like it. Thank you for watching in general. That always helps. Thank you to everybody on Patreon, and thank you to all the channel members. Until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.